Kilbear is on the eastern shore of Georgian Bay, and we are part of the 30,000 Islands Archipelago, which is the largest freshwater archipelago in the world. A lot of people consider the loon to be the sound of wilderness, and it is. But here at Kilbear, we also have the sound of the rattlesnake. And to me, that is the real sound of the wilderness. The early days of the park, the, the attitude was basically rattlesnakes were dangerous and, and they worked to get rid of them. In the 70s, they started to change and, and to accept rattlesnakes. The park was supposed to protect all animals, not just the furry critters. Rattlers get a bad rap because uh, people aren't familiar with snakes. They, they've never worked with them, they generally don't ever see them, and they've heard a lot of bad things about them. But the rattlesnake isn't as threatening as it comes off to be. Most of the time, you don't even know the snake is there. A lot of people walk by and don't even realize it. The rattlesnake's unique to Ontario specifically because it's the only venomous snake. But it's also a really unique snake because it has heat sensing pits just below its eyes. And this allows it to be a really successful ambush predator. It'll sit there and wait and is able to detect the heat of a prey and uh, successfully hunt that prey. The Massasauga is a threatened species here. It's just one below endangered, meaning that it's on its way to potentially becoming extinct. There are several different threats for the Massasauga, one of the major ones being habitat loss, and some of the other ones would be human persecution, poaching, and one of the big ones here at Kilbert would be road mortality. Where I'm sitting right now is a perfect example of habitat for Massasaugas. The rocks give off a lot of heat and absorb a lot of heat from the sun, which is perfect for thermoregulation purposes for the rattlesnakes but there's a lot of retreat sites as well, so they can easily go and hide underneath a rock if a predator comes by. My research at Kilbear is based off of the road mortality mitigation that's been installed in the park. The park noticed a high level of road mortalities of rattlesnakes and they decided to take action. So they built fencing alongside the roads and eco passages crossing the roads. So the snakes couldn't get on the road and they could cross safely through these eco passages. When we go out looking for rattlesnakes, we typically go to known habitat spots that we've seen them before, and we wander the rock barren slowly, looking on the edge of the rocks and the plants for any snakes that might possibly be basking to try and warm themselves up, or just moving through the habitat in search of food or mates. I really enjoy working with a rattler because not many people have the opportunity to work with such a unique species and something that normally you would not be able to handle if you weren't doing research on them. I get to be outside all day exploring the forest and you never know what you're going to find, so it's pretty exciting. Mike, you got a snake? You got it. You got it. Once I capture a rattlesnake, I bring it back to our lab, and once it's at the lab, we're able to measure it, weigh it. 308. And we also take a picture of the snake, and we take a picture of the snake so we have a record of that snake's unique blotches down its back. Each snake has a unique pattern of blotches and we're able to identify that snake at a later time via the photo. Every rattlesnake we catch in the park, we put a pit tag in it. And what this is, is basically uh, identifying microchips. So it's very similar to what you put in dogs. And this doesn't allow us to track the snakes. It's not a GPS, but what it does is it allows us to identify each snake we catch with a unique ID code. And where this comes really useful is we put these automated tag readers at the entrance of all the eco passages. So anytime a snake crosses into the eco passage with a tag, it will record the time and date of crossing. So after three years of research, I've handled a couple hundred rattlesnakes. Some of them are really calm and more than willing to participate in the research, while others aren't so happy to be caught and handled, and these ones tend to lusk us with their scent, so. After we finish measuring the snakes, we take them back to where they found them, if it was out in their natural habitat. But if we find a snake somewhere on a road or in a cottage where it's more dangerous, we'll move them away from this, but not very far. They have really high sight fidelity, and this means that they do not do well if they're moved far away from their home. Every day I bike the roads in Kilbear and surrounding Kilbear in order to look for any alive or dead rattlesnakes on the road. And this gives me an idea if the snakes are successfully being kept off the road by the fences, and I'm able to record how many deaths are occurring in the park. And this totaled to about 25 kilometers per trip, meaning I got into really good shape during my field season.
The other neat way we monitor the eco passages is through the use of trail cameras. So we have a trail camera at the entrance and exit of each eco passage aiming down and it takes a picture every single minute. Example here, you can kind of see and we've discovered that snake. since the installation of the fencing, there has been reduced road mortality of snakes in the park. Yeah, see most of it. And the fencing has also successfully funneled the snakes towards the eco passages and they are using these eco passages to cross to the other side of the road safely. We've recorded a lot of different creatures using the eco passages. Not only reptiles, we have quite a lot of mammals using it, things such as raccoons and fishers and chipmunks. Uh, but we also had quite a lot of other reptiles that could be benefiting from the eco passages. One of the outcomes of this research is we're hoping to influence managers and decision makers so that in the future, maybe 10 years down the road, road mitigation such as these eco passages and fencing will become a normal part of road infrastructure. As new highways and roads are constructed, these will just be installed with them. I think it's really important that we do work to protect them and to make sure that we do have them so that people a hundred years from now will still be able to see rattlesnakes on the eastern shore of Georgian Bay and, and know that this is part of our, our natural heritage, that we've gone full circle from killing snakes to working very hard to protect them by building the eco-passages and putting in the snake fencing.